Hey everyone, welcome to Think Woodworks. My name is Izzy Swan, and today I'm going to show you how you can make your very own pantograph. I'll give you all the measurements, the right ones this time. <laughs> Last week I posted a video about making your own pantograph, and I was trying to cram three videos into one day, and I got ahead of myself. I made a very rookie mistake with the geometry on these things. I've never built one before, but the geometry is very simple. And I just, I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> I've taken the video down, I'm going to show you the right way to do it today and uh, be a little bit more careful in the future about posting stuff like this without checking it first. Anyway, Matias caught it. Thank you, Matias, for doing that. I never go back and look at my videos. It would have been out there for everybody to see and somebody would have made it and then yelled at me because it didn't work out right. But Anyway, uh, today we're going to show you how to do this and not only am I going to show you how to build this real simple pantograph, but I'm going to show you some math a real basic way that you can actually do this with very little math and build any size pantograph you want. And um, today we're going to talk about two to one pantographs. What I mean by that is that's a two to one reduction. If you have a four inch letter and you copy it, it's going to translate to a two inch letter on the piece that you're carving. And I'm worried to stick within those parameters because it's just real simple that way. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. So let's uh, let's get to it. Okay, so the easiest way to think about a pantograph is like a square. I've got 12 inches between each of these um, outside points and 6 inches on the center. So what happens here, uh, if this was my tracer and this was my pinning point, this is where the I would fix it to the table so it wouldn't move, anything I do right here is going to translate to the center position in one half scale. Using this as a, a base or a, a template, you can build your pantograph any size you want. If you were to do 24 inch rails, you just 12 inches would be the center. So, if I draw a if I draw a circle right here, it translates to right here. To it, the same action happens in the center position in one half scale. Now we don't need all this business going on here to make this thing work. So I'm going to get rid of the center piece here. And let me pull this off, and I don't need this. I'll just replace it with a short section. And we don't need this. So now what we end up with is a shape that looks like this. And the three points that matter are the this point, the fixed point, the center point, and the end point, which is our tracer. So now when I do the same thing over here, this is where our tracer would be, I get the same action in the center position. So no matter what I do over here, it's going to happen right here in half scale. And that's how, that's the geometry you use to build a, a, a pantograph that has a one's half scale. And that's what I did over here. Okay, so what I've got here is basically the same shape we were just looking at. I've got, a, I based mine off of a 14 inch box. So I've got 14 inches from the outside points to the outside points. You know, from, the, from here to here is also 14 inches, and from this point to this point is 14 inches. Now, the half of 14 is 7 inches, so in my center point, 7 inches, I've gone over 7 inches, and I, that's where my router bit sits, or my router sits on that centered out. And now, let's, if I want to carve out a letter, the easiest way to set this up is to find a center point on that letter. Drop your indexing pin on that, and then find a center point on the piece you want to carve out and put your router bit right above that and that centers everything out. So now if I want to carve that out I'll just follow that along and that'll cut it out center wise and I had this piece a little bit offset but that cut, that'll mark it out center of your piece. And the same thing works if you want to do an entire letter. You find the center point you know up and down and the length of it you'll find the center point let's say it's right here I would set my, my indexing pin on that center point and this would tell me over here where the center point of that assign should be. And I would just, you know, from top to bottom and side to side, I'd mark the center point and then I'd put it right above that bit. Now there's a lot of travel here, so if you've got a bigger sign, you want to start over here and work your way over this way. So if I wanted to carve this whole sign out, I would actually have my eye about right here in this position so I could start over here and work my way across. So these are really easy to build. The geometry is really simple. I'm going to show you a little bit about how I have this put together. So to make it easier for you, how uh, first of all, because I've got this made out of three-quarter inch plywood, there's a small amount of play. 
So it's adequate for doing letters and that sort of thing or cutting out small shapes. I wouldn't try to do any carving with it. Uh, if you want to do some carving, Matthias Wandel on his website, woodgears.ca, he's got a really kick-ass uh, design for a pantograph. And if you want to do some carving or complicated stuff, go check out that go check out that design. It's really, really a nice design. Uh, but I have this pinned over here. Let me show you how I have this pinned. I have this pinned in. A, I have a block of wood with a quarter inch hole drilled in it that I thread a 5 16 bolt in, and it sits on a pivot point. That way I can move this up and down and get my bit out of the way when I need to. And then on the sides here, because I don't have a lot of room under here, I didn't raise this up. I wanted to keep it as close to the table as possible. I don't have, the bolts don't come all the way through. You see that? I just have a quarter inch hole drilled in this bottom piece of plywood and a 5 16 hole drilled in the top piece. And then I take a 5 16 bolt and I thread it into that quarter inch hole. Now once I have this thing all set up where I want it, I'll just back that bolt out a little bit, drop a little CA glue in there and then tighten this back down into a, you know, make sure I don't get it too tight. You want it to move freely and uh, that'll, that'll keep that bolt securely in place. The other thing I wanted to mention real quick is that when you're building these, um, I made mine with two and a half inch rails here and here. This, or uh, yeah, here and here. And then these, the center point where I mounted my drill was a three inch base and over here was a three inch base. And that gives me quite a bit of room to do some signs. I can do a sign with this thing up to about two foot long if, if I start my letterings, my letters way over here and go that way. So, you know, using those basic principles that we just talked about, you can build a pantograph any size. But remember, the larger you build it, the less stable it gets, especially if you're just using three quarter on the flat. But anyway, guys, play around with the idea. Have some fun with it. It's a great way to make signs, do some small stuff. If you want to do some fancier things like carving or something a little bit more stable, go check out Matthias' website, woodgears.ca. Hey, everybody. Thanks again for watching. I certainly appreciate the interest everyone's showing and all the comments. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Lots more fun stuff, craziness. If you haven't seen my other videos, go check them out. we got some wild stuff and a lot more helpful tips. Thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you all soon.